This is Deborah Potter with News Lab, and I'm going to give you a quick introduction to a tool, a free online tool, that allows you to create lots of interactive graphics you can embed on any website. The tool is from IBM. It's an experiment, and it's available online at a very complicated URL. So there's almost no point in writing this down. What I would suggest is search for many eyes, and this will pop up pretty quickly. So what can it do? Well, lots of things. And one way to start is by taking a look at the visualization types here in the left-hand menu to get an idea of what it can do. And what's great about this is many eyes will tell you what each of these visualizations is good for. So for instance, if you want to compare a set of values, they suggest a bar chart or a bubble chart. If you're taking a look at change over time, you would want either a line graph or possibly a stack graph parts of a whole, a pie chart, you can analyze text with a word tree or a tag cloud, and you can make maps. So there are a lot of options here, and it's all pretty easy to use. Now, Many Eyes has a lot of data available on it. If you click on data sets, you'll get an idea. Hmm, 5,826 pages worth of data. All of that data has been uploaded by people who are members of Many Eyes. And you can't really tell at a glance whether the data is valid or not. You can create your own free account and upload data if you want to work with it. But for now, let's just work with some of the data, understanding that we can't be absolutely sure that it's valid. Let's explore uh, quickly before we start working with data some of the options uh, in terms of visualizations and what you can see. So I clicked on Explore Visualizations. Now I'm going to sort them by rating, just to give, an, give us a chance to look at some that have been you know, well rated. And here are a couple of options. For example, here's a, a world map uh, that indicates alcohol consumption worldwide. It's loading now, and these, are, these use JavaScript, so you have to have Java embedded on your computer in order to use this. So you can see here that the top alcohol uh, consumption country in the world, at least in 2007, was the Russian Federation. Uh, the United States came in at 8.6, so considerably lower, 10.3, 8.6. If you really want to find somebody or a country that was tops in alcohol consumption, interestingly enough, Uganda, with 17.6, the number one country in alcohol consumption worldwide. Okay, that's one type of visualization, a map. And as you can see, it's interactive. You can scroll around and highlight and see how things uh, turn up. Another option is something called a stack graph. And uh, this uh, interactive uh, lists of various types of movies. So it's movie genres from 1888 to 2012. And you can see that the number of genres, for one thing, has exploded uh, in the last 20 years. Um, for example, there was no such thing as an adult movie back in 1912. Um, you can also see, for example, that uh, dramas have uh, gone up substantially, but they were always popular. So you can uh, sort this, if you want to, at, by different types of movie genres. So let's say we wanted to see crime. Okay, You see how the number of crime movies has gone up dramatically. Now let's try crime, drama, and what I'm doing is holding down control so we can compare them. Uh, romance, okay, and how about uh, adventure? So those are just four different types, and you can see how they've, you know, their popularity has gone up and down over time. Numbers of movies made, obviously there are tons more made now, but it's quite interesting to, to compare something like this over time. So that's a stack graph, and that's what you can do with it. All right, let's now look for some data and build a visualization ourselves. So I'm going to put up data sets up there on the right, and I'm going to search. And let's search for commuting, because that's always a big topic. And the kind of data that pops up under commuting, well, here right at the top, we have from the League of American Bicyclists, uh, largest cities for bicycle commuting. There's the data set now. Now what would we do with this? What's a good way of comparing this kind of data? I'm going to choose a, a bubble graph, I think, and let's see if we can visualize this on a bubble graph, okay, bubble chart. Here are our options. We're going to compare a, a set of values, right? We have quite a few options, quite a few items, so they're saying maybe a bar chart wouldn't do. Uh, let's set up a bubble chart, and there it comes. Now, what we're looking at here, don't, don't be misled. You have to look down here at the bottom and see what we're actually comparing. This is population. So we don't want to just compare populations. We want to be able to look at you know, bicycle commuting. So in 2008, 
it tells us that the number one city for bicycle commuters in the country is Portland, Oregon. This is the most recent data, apparently. Portland, Oregon, right there. And you can go on down, and interestingly, you know, Washington, D.C. is fairly high. Um, more commuters by bicycle in Washington, D.C. than, say, a, a city like Honolulu, which one would think has, you know, considerably better weather. Uh, but if you want to look at it over time, in 2000, interestingly, Portland was not number one. Minneapolis and Seattle both had Portland beat. So you can see change over time with this bubble graph as well. Okay, what am I going to do with this data now? Well, I'm going to save it so that I can use it. Someone has already tagged it, so that's useful. And we'll call this bicy bicycle commuting. And we don't need to really describe it. We do need to verify that we're human. It's one of those. So O-N-G-N-J-L. And I'm going to put publish. Now it's actually creating the visualization that I was just exploring. And here it comes. And now I can do something with it. All right. So it says down here I could share this. And when I push share this, I can share it, interestingly, in a lot of different ways. I can email a link to somebody. I can share it on Facebook or Twitter. I can create a static image, but probably not. Or, right here, I can use a live visualization. To embed it on the web, you simply copy and paste in this particular bit of code. So there's just a very quick introduction to what you can do with many eyes. I hope you'll explore it and have fun creating.